Hello everyone and welcome to this lecture. Uh, in our previous lecture, we saw how we can solve a homogeneous second order ordinary differential equation with constant coefficients. And today we're going to see an example. So this was our equation, the differential equation. And we saw that the general form of solution had taken a form like this, where C1 and C2 are arbitrary constants and R1 and R2 are roots coming from the auxiliary equation. So if you recall, the auxiliary equation for this differential equation was AR squared plus BR plus C equals to zero. And you can see that I have written down a differential equation. So if you just look at this equation and compare this one and this one, you can easily see that A is one, B is minus one, C is minus six, right? So the auxiliary equation will have this format, AR square plus BR plus C equals to zero. And we need to solve that to get two values of R. Because in this example, you'll see that this R1 and R2, they are, equal, uh, they are not equal. So let's try to solve this auxiliary equation first. This is just R square minus R minus six equals to zero. And it has two solutions, that is R plus, sorry, it should not be R plus. One of them is just plus two over here, and then you'll have R minus three over here. So R equals to two or R equals to three. So let's call R1 as two and R2 as three. Sorry, this should be minus two. Yeah. So this is my two roots. And using this solution, I can easily write down the solution yt as c1 e to the power r1, that is minus two t, then c2 e to the power three t. This is done. This is the general solution, the gs. Now, if I now fix two boundary conditions or two initial values that is when y of 0 um, the derivative of y with respect to t when evaluated at 0 is 8 and y of 0 is 1 and using these conditions we can trace out a particular solution so the particular solution will come from the general solution plus the conditions that is either boundary value conditions or initial value conditions so just like before we have to find the c1 and c2 so let's first use this one so when x uh, sorry t equals to 0 you have 1 so that should give you 1 over here and if you put t equals to 0 this is just c1 plus c2 this is one equation and if you evaluate y prime of t like this, then you will have minus 2 c1 e to the power minus 2 t. And then you will have 3 c2 e to the power 3 t. Now put t equals to 0. And this part becomes minus 2 c1 plus 3 c2. But since these conditions are the conditions that we are applying onto the differential equation on the solution to be precise. So this will become 8, right? So now you have two equations as c1 c2 is equals to 1 and minus 2 c1 plus 3 c2 as 8. Now what you need to do, you just need to solve for c1 and c2. If you do that, the solution will be c1 and c2 are respectively minus 1 and 2. So our particular solution that is ps is just minus e to the power minus 2t plus 2 e to the power 3t. This is how you can easily solve when the roots are distinct. So let me just again, um, this example roots, that is this R1 and R2 are distinct. 
that is r1 not equals to r2 next we would like to see a case of r1 and r2 to be equal that is we want to see cases where these two roots r1 and r2 are the same so let's try to do it okay next case we want to see what happens when r1 is equals to r2 and we can do it in a general way so again consider the equation a y double prime b y plus sorry b y prime c y this is equals to zero right just like before this one and now the auxiliary equation so let me write aux equation to denote the auxiliary equation it's just a r square plus br plus c equals to zero and since we want r1 equals to r2 we are demanding that b square minus 4ac is zero right this is the thing that we are requiring and if you require that then instead of typing r1 and r2 let's call it just r0 so the auxiliary equation will now be br0 plus c this r0 is just a notation that it's denoting the fact that r1 and r2 they are equal that is the repeated repetitive characteristic roots so again let us choose a solution y1 of t as e to the power r0 t because this r0 is a root right right so that's why we are calling it this is one of the solutions the second question we ask what about y2 of t because this is a second order equation we are supposed to uh, get two linearly independent solutions the thing that will happen right now is that to find a second one is not simply a constant multiple of y1 because if you remember in our past lectures we call that if y2 and y1 are independent of each other that is two functions that are independent of each other they are not just simply a scalar multiple of each other so y1 and y2 cannot be uh, written in such a manner that let's say if you want y2 it can be written with some alpha y1 where alpha is a scalar instead now what we'll choose is that we want to try a solution of the form y2 is this function which depends on some function u of t this is also a, a t dependent function and then we want to put y1 so instead of y2 is equal to alpha y1 we just made the following adjustment we just made this what, whatever is uh, appearing over here time dependent that is the variable dependent so let's just write like this also let's cross this out so that you guys don't get confused so if you do that if you choose such y so this is also called a trial function we are trying this that's why we're calling it a trial function and if you just take the first derivative this will just be u prime e to the power r0 t plus r0 u e to the power r0 t and then the second derivative will be u double prime plus 2 r0 u e to the power r0 t plus r0 squared u e to the power r0 t this is just differentiating with respect to time that is t you can call it time you can call it another parameter but for physics people this is just time we are just thinking like that and since we want also want y2 to be a solution of the equation that we're dealing with that is the second order equation like this you can put that this y 
prime and y double prime over there and what will happen is that you will get some conditions out of that so let's try to do it so we are putting all this y1 oh, sorry y2 prime y2 double prime into our main equation over here since we are assuming y2 is uh, y2 is something that will satisfy this equation so let's do it so let me write a y2 double prime plus b y2 prime plus c y2 as a you yeah, now i'm just putting the values that i obtained over here so this will be u double prime plus 2 r not u e to the power r0 t oh yes i forgot to write uh, e to the power r0 t over here so here instead of writing like this i want to uh, factor this out so i'll do that that's that will be more convenient so u double prime r0 2 r0 u prime r0 square then i'll have my u and then i'm factoring this e to the power r0 t then you'll have b u prime plus r0 u e to the power r0 t then you will have finally c u e to the power r0 t now you need to do some algebra and gather the terms for u double prime u prime and just u and if you do that then you will find a u double prime plus 2 a r0 plus b u prime plus a r0 square plus b r0 plus c times u and i should have written it like this okay so let me just start from the left side so that i can cover the whole screen so yeah so this will be a u double prime plus 2 a r0 plus b u prime plus a r0 squared b r0 plus c now we have our u over here and we are factoring this e to the power r0 t and now if you notice that this can be written as follows because you see that using this whole thing that you uh, that we wrote in terms of u this will just reduce to a thing that is u double prime of t would be zero and the reason for that can be found with some rationale that i'm going to present right now now as we were saying that we can we have to find out something from here and that will simplify our results and from there we can impose some conditions on u double prime or u prime or u so to do that what i'm going to do is that i'm going to use some information that we saw earlier that is one of them will be this one this auxiliary equation and if you use this auxiliary equation over here this huge expression you can see that this guy actually is zero and because of that this whole term over here is going to zero now so this is zero right so what about this term you if you recall that this r0 was coming from the fact that b square minus 4 ac is equals to 0 right so what does that tell us about r not that means two roots were equal and that means this is just b by twice a so 2 a r not plus b equals to 0 right so this guy is also 0 ah we got a really simplified result so finally we can write it as a u double prime 
e to the power r0 t but we assumed on the very beginning that y2 is a solution of the differential equation so this part over here let me just highlight it out so this part over here will also be 0 because we assumed y2 is also a solution of a y double prime plus b y prime plus c y equals to 0 right okay so this means here we'll have a 0 because this guy will go to 0 so that means on the left hand side 0 and on the right hand side we have something like this and I'm just writing the left hand side over here instead of writing 0 over here I just wrote it over here so and a will not be 0 because if a is 0 then our equation is no longer a second order equation so e to the power r naught 0 t cannot be 0 for any constant r naught because that would mean that t is going to minus infinity so we are saying that u double prime is 0 that means the most general form of u of t will take alpha 0 t plus alpha 1 where alpha 0 and alpha 1 alpha 0 and alpha 1 are arbitrary constant now is this it and the answer is no because this alpha 1 will produce y1 again so what you need to do is that you need to just take this part so this is the only relevant part and the way to see that this alpha 1 will produce y1 again is to just take the linear combination y1 y1 plus y2 and you if you write y2 as ut e to the power r0 t where y1 is itself e to the power r0 t so let me just uh, show this thing small thing to you so let's write it like this right forget the arbitrary constant that appear over here in that is c1 and c2 so y1 was e to the power r0 t right and y2 is just alpha 0 t that is u i'm writing the u expression first this is our u of t and then we have e to the power r0 t so you can see that up to a constant that is if you take this whole thing out that is you multiply and simplify this is just 1 plus alpha e to the power r0 t plus alpha 0 t e to the power r0 t so this is just this this is just similar to a c1 y1 again and this is similar to a c2 y2 so this is that is this alpha 1 is just reproducing the y1 so that's the justification so the only part we will need is this alpha 0 t relevant part so finally we can write down the full solution as so full solution solution y of t is equals to c1 y1 plus c2 y2 where y1 had a form e to the power r0 t so let me just emphasize this thing again and this was alpha 0 t e to the power r0 t right so let's write it down <coughs> c1 e to the power r0 t plus c2 alpha 0 t e to the power r0 t now you can take this e to the power r0 t common that is factor it out you can write this as c1 and this c2 alpha 0 can be rewritten as c2 prime and there is t so this is the most general solution whenever there is a repetition of roots for second order ordinary differential equation with constant coefficients so let's see a very short example a numerical example that is 
our equation is y double prime plus 4y prime plus 4y is equals to 0 right and what is the auxiliary equation so the auxiliary equation is r square plus 4r plus 4 equals to 0 and it has two roots r1 equals to r2 equals to minus 2 so let's call this minus 2 as r0 and you just use this fact this solution so our general solution will be just e to the power minus 2t c1 plus c2 you can give a prime you cannot give a prime that's up to you so these are just two arbitrary constant but there is a t over here and that's it you are done and the last case that we are going to consider is that when r1 and r2 are complex so this will be a last case for today notice that for a differential equation that we are dealing with so far now the auxiliary equations are coming as i r square plus b r plus c equals to 0 it might happen whenever b square minus 4 ac is less than 0 the roots will be complex but we said that a b and c belongs to set of real numbers so they are real numbers right the only way that is possible is that this r1 if this is a complex let's call it uh, lambda plus i mu and if r2 is coming in the form of lambda minus i u that is r1 is equals to r2 complex conjugate only then you can have this a b c as real parameters because if you recall from your high school that this coefficients over here that is b by a can be written as the addition of the two roots all right and this c divided by a can be written as the multiplication of the two roots so the only way you can have real numbers in the auxiliary equation and the roots being complex number is that the two roots that will come from the auxiliary equation will be complex conjugate of each other and how do you solve this again since they are distinct because these are complex numbers but they are distinct right they are not the same so the general solution we wrote as e to the power r1t plus c2 e to the power r2t but now what you need to do you just need to put this complex values so c1 instead of r1 now you'll have lambda t plus e to the power i mu t and here you will have c2 e to the power lambda t and here you will have a minus i mu t like this right now you can do some simplification that is take it to the power lambda t outside you have c1 now if you look at this e to the power i mu t and this is some identity the Euler's identity from your high school that e to the power i x is equals to cosine x plus i sine x so here instead of x we have mu t so this will be just cosine mu t plus sine mu t and there will be i over here so you have c1 cosine mu t plus c1 there will be a i sine mu t and from this part you will have c2 cosine minus mu t sorry not minus sorry 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 about that you have a e to the power minus i mu t so if you just put a minus in front of this i this affects this plus sign over here and it becomes a minus sign so when you have a e to the power minus i mu t you will have cosine mu t minus i sine mu t so the rest of the terms are just minus c2 obviously there is an i and sine mu t right now to simplify further we are going to collect the coefficients in front of cosine and sine so let's try to do that that will be just c1 plus c2 
and we have our cosine mu t and finally you, you will have plus i then you will have c1 minus c2 sine mu t so this is the most general kind of solution that you can have but you could also write it like this that is you keep this imaginary parts over here there is no harm in doing that so this is how you can easily solve a uh, second order differential equation the homogeneous ones with the constant coefficients and if you are wondering what is an example when my roots will be complex number a very simple example is the harmonic oscillator system that you see in your day-to-day -day physics because the auxiliary equation is what r square plus omega square right sorry not omega square over here it should be just omega oh no sorry it should be omega square yeah my mistake and you will have r is equals to plus minus omega so it really doesn't matter it will be by uh, something k by m and omega is equals to square root over k by m if you recall from your physics class so this will be just r is equals to minus omega square r square and finally you will have r is equals to i plus minus omega sorry not like that not like that oops so let me write it in an organized manner previously it got a bit disorganized so minus omega squared so this will be just plus minus i omega so you can see that there is no real part so lambda would be zero and you can just put in the imaginary part and get your solutions so this is how we covered all the cases for second order homogeneous differential equation that is ordinary differential equations we saw three cases where can be the roots can be distinct where the roots can be equal and the roots can be complex conjugate of each other and from the next video we are going to see that how we can deal with non-homogeneous second order ordinary differential equations this will be it for today and thank you